فتم الحسن يفقه قولي اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم سليما صلاه تفتح لنا ابواب الردى والتيسير وتغلق بها ابواب الشر والتاسير انت مولانا فنعم مولا ونعم نصير okay we move on to section 17 سوره الانبياء to سوره حج this section continues from the previous section by beginning with سوره الانبياء the سوره of the prophets the سوره begins by warning of humans beings human beings being heedless and forgetful of the next world and followed by discussion on those who deny Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then comes an overview of some of the wonders of his creation showing the greatness of the creator this is followed by mention of the unbelievers mocking the final messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and how Allah eventually destroys all those who deny him so these individuals who were mocking the prophet of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam are known as the mustaqzin now these mockers were those individuals who thought they were clever they thought they were smart in trying to ridicule the prophet of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam however the joke was in reality it was on them because what they thought that they were mocking the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was making a mockery out of them showing that they were the true jahils amongst these you had whom the leader of the jahils and the mustahzi'in who was abu jahal before islam abu jahal was known as abu hakam the father of wisdom but because of the deranged and delusional manner in which he was behaving in he was given the title the father of ignorance allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroys him just as he destroys those foolish people who mocked the prophets that came before the likes of Fir'aun, Nimrud, uh, Thamud, Ad, the قوم of Sayyidina Lut alayhi salam etc. So wherever there is an individual who is going to mock a prophet wherever there are a group of people who are going to mock the muslims Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us here eventually the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come to pass and you will see those people who are carrying out this atrocious behavior you will see them being destroyed then comes the news of the prophets beginning with a detailed description of how prophet ibrahim alayhi salam debated his people showing the fallacy of their beliefs which led them to fling him into a fire from which he was saved by allah now here the fire that he was thrown in it was not a shallow fire and it wasn't the fact that it was cool for him straight away when sayyidina ibrahim alayhi salam was catapulted into this fire this fire had been burning for days until it reached its peak heat and then he was thrown into it when he was thrown into it it did not become cool straight away it was to test him to show the reality of his patience once he was fully submerged into the fire that is when it became cool for him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removed all properties of burning from that fire such that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it so to show the honor of his halil his friend Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removed the burning properties of all fire for those days that the prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam was in the fire no one was able to bake bread no one was ever was able to light a stove in their homes Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam when he's challenging his, his family members his clan and when he's catapulted into the fire at that time he is only 16 years old showing what that it doesn't matter about your age when you are able to distinguish between faults that is which is false or then that which is truthfulness that you should be firm upon it and you should stand up for the truth don't waver thinking you know I'm just a little kid what can I do no in the face of falsehood you stand up and at the very least you curse it within your heart and that is the lowest form sayyidna ibrahim alayhi salam when he's catapulted into the fire he remains in there for 40 to 50 days he is within that fire and it's completely peaceful for him no burning effect whatsoever and sayyidna ibrahim alayhi salam he said that those days that i spent in the fire were the best days of my life I wish I could spend my entire lifetime within the fire as it was within those days right so this is how Allah he saves his people and when we look at what is happening in Palestine now you know when we look in other places as well people feel sorry for them no no as I keep mentioning we should be feeling sorry for ourselves 
That we are in that state where we are hopeless, that we cannot go and help them. So whenever anybody wants to walk around with arrogance saying, yeah, I go gym and I do MMA or I'm a big man and this and that and I've got money and I've got all of this power and this wealth and this strength. And you can't help your Muslim brethren, you can't help your Muslim brothers and sisters. This is at the point you come to the realization, as Sayyidina Ali says, man is nothing. You come from what? You come from sperm, which is filth. And then you become what? You become food for worms. You come from sperm, which is filth. That you have to do naj- ghusl after. That is your reality. And in the middle of it, what are you? You're a bag of feces. Because whatever you eat, you spend it on the toilet. So how can you walk with arrogance when your brothers and sisters, our brothers and sisters are falling into this hardship? But then who is the victory for? ذَلِكَ الْفَوْزُ الْكَبِيرُ The victory is for them. This is why you see them, their body parts are just there. They, they are in a state of absolute destruction, but what? Their bodies smell of fragrance. They're dying. They, they, why? Because those who die in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do not perceive them to be dead. You just think that they're dead, but Allah keeps them alive. Allah is giving them, giving them their provisions. So they are the ones who are victorious. They are the ones who are successful. We are the ones who are falling flat on our faces. And this is what you are getting here for, from, from this narration. Then we have mentioned of many prophets and the difficulties they face. Sayyidina Ishaq, Yaqub, Lut, Nuh, Dawood, Suleiman, Ayyub, Ismail, Idris, Zulkifal, Zunnun, there was Yunus, Zakariya, and Isa alayhim salam. The surah ends with words speaking about the final messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was sent as a mercy to all. Then comes surah hajj. Now surah hajj, it has two verses of prostration within there. Now with the Hanafis, we do sajda in the first verse. The second verse of prostration is not for us. We don't do sajda within that one. Why? Because there's a difference of opinion whether it is a verse of prostration or not. The other imams, they do sajda on that. But again, that's according to their principles. We have our principles. They are right according to their principles. We are right according to our principles. Anyone who goes and argues with you know, the Malikis, the Shafis, the Hanbalis and says, we're Hanafi, we're right. Or the Shafi who comes and says, we're Shafi, we're right. You guys are wrong. This is nothing but an ignoramus, is a jahid. Because the Imams, they respected each other. They have scholarly differences with adab and respect. And we should behave in the same way. Because first and foremost, many of the brothers who argue about this, or sisters argue about this, they don't even know the rules for istinja. They don't know the difference between what a sunnah istinja is and what a wajib istinja is. And now they probably go, when they probably listen to this and probably get confused, what do you mean by wajib? No man, whenever you use the toilet, you have to do istinja, do you? You know, people break the wudu, they pass wind and then they say, yeah, yeah, I need to go do istinja, do you? When you don't know the basics of these kind of things, don't fall into argumentation because you've got a keyboard and you've got access to Google. Right, because this just makes you uh, falling into the deceptions of Satan, Satan in foolish argumentation. The surah begins with a graphic, frightening description of the blowing of the trumpet when all comes to an end. This is followed by proofs for resurrection and a description of the destinations of humans along with some descriptions of the afterlife. We are then taught some regulations around Hajj and war whilst being told of the destruction of nations who denied Allah. This surah Hajj is the surah of war. So if you want to know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about war, what he says about the unbelievers, this is the surah that you turn to. Now here, when it's speaking about war and it's speaking about striking people where they find them in, you know, in other places of the Quran, etc. Remember, this is permission for the Quraysh, the Muslims of one at the time. They are given permission at that time to fight those people who were aggressing against them. This is not a free for all for you to go around, you know, just grabbing Karen and then just trying to attack her or grabbing John and trying to attack him. This does not justify that. If you do that, that just makes you a coward. You're not doing jihad. There are rules of engagement and there are actual books written in volumes on how you engage in jihad. Right? And there's two forms of jihad. You had jihad, when you're fighting in the way of Allah under the Imam, under the Amir. And then you have the jihad where you're fighting against yourself. Most of us guys, you can't fight yourself. 
You can't do jihad against yourself. You can't get yourself out of your bed for fajr to pray on time. 40 days straight. Go and do that. Then we'll speak about you doing jihad fi sabilah. You know, I'm going to go and fight for the Palestinians. No, 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 no. They don't want you to come and fight for them. Because what you're going to do, you're going to become a liability. Why? Because they are getting their success from Allah because of their sincerity. But they are only there for Al-Aqsa. They are only there because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Al-Aqsa and its precincts have been blessed by Allah. That's why they're not leaving. That those people who are in that land, they are the neighbors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They only stay there because Allah allows them to stay there. And the ones who leave, they only leave because Allah has caused them to leave. So when they are there, they're there for a completely different reason. Right? That's why they are not leaving. But for us, you know, sort yourself out first before you try to, you know, be a help to the rest of the ummah. Help yourself first. The surah ends by showing the insignificance of the idols that the unbelievers worship, such that Allah is displaying that they could not even create a fly. And by calling all to the way of worship personified by Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. And then on this night, the 17th of Ramadan, Yes, 17th of Ramadan. That's how fast it's flying by. You know, Hafiz Sadat, mashallah, he's looking forward to the end so he can give his throat a rest. But 17th of Ramadan, tonight is the night of Badr. Tonight is the night that the, the battle of Badr, it commenced. And in the, in the daytime, you see towards Asr, between Asr and Maghrib, that is when it was at its peak. Second year after Hijri, 313 odd Sahaba took to fight a fully equipped army with a cavalry, with horses, with camels, with everything of a thousand plus people. And yet they did not waver, they did not back out. Why? Because they were only there for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were only there for His Rasul salawat al rabbi wa salam alayhi. So on this night, we ask you to remember them, send salawat upon the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, make du'as for them, and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow you to be of those who are raised with them. After the Taraweeh, as every year, we will have a narration of all the events that took place before, during and after the Battle of Badr. It will last for about an hour. So my youngsters, at least, if you can sacrifice one hour of your Netflix time, please stay back and listen to what happened. Because of them today, we are able to stand tall and firm and be the Muslims that we are. They are the ones who showed us what it means to have Iman. They are the ones who showed us what it means to be a Muslim and a Mu'min. So this is, these are the people that you want to be amongst. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the of Imam Bukhari said, that you will be with those whom you love. So we make dua that we will be on the day of reckoning with the people of Badr.